Hi everyone, uh, this is Jake Wynn from the National Museum of Civil War Medicine, here to talk a little bit about camp diseases during the Civil War. Uh, disease was the number one killer of Civil War soldiers. Uh, kills about two-thirds of those that died during the conflict, uh, that die of disease, not of bullets or cannonballs on the battlefield. Uh, diseases were spread in camps very much like this one behind me. These were the places where soldiers spent the vast majority of their time during the Civil War, not out on the march, but in camps like these. Uh, these camps were notorious for foul smells, for poor sanitation. Uh, the soldiers while camping there oftentimes ate poor diets as well. And so the conditions of these men are already pretty weak when they're sitting in these camps. Most of the times these kinds of camps are only being used during winter time or when weather is so poor that they can't go out on the march. So factor in that as well that many of these winters during the Civil War are going to be spent in camps like this. I want to talk about three specific diseases that I think are kind of instructive of what the Civil War experience was like for these soldiers. Uh, the first one that I want to talk about is diarrhea and dysentery. Now this is the most common disease of the American Civil War. This is something that virtually every Civil War soldier faced at one point or another during the conflict, and in the Union Army alone resulted in more than 27,000 deaths. Uh, diarrhea and dysentery was spread in these camps because of, again, poor diet, um, the, the nutrition for these soldiers is, is not great, um, but also because of the poor sanitation in these camps. The other disease I want to talk about is also related to sanitation, and this is one that's very common as well during the Civil War, and that would be typhoid fever. Now, typhoid fever is spread through contaminated food and water, and that comes down to the sanitation in these camps. In many cases, especially at the early stage of the Civil War, these camps were in really rough shape in terms of sanitation. Oftentimes open sewers, latrines that oftentimes leaked into water sources, and that led to large-scale outbreaks of typhoid fever in, in these army camps. And it's not only soldiers that were impacted by things like typhoid fever. Uh, in the first winter of the American Civil War, a typhoid outbreak developed in Washington, D.C., and in fact killed the son of President Abraham Lincoln. Um, and so typhoid fever was a very serious uh, condition seen throughout the Civil War. Now the last one I want to talk about is one that was probably the most feared disease uh, amongst uh, both armies during the American Civil War, and that would be smallpox. Now smallpox uh, was one of the rare diseases during the Civil War that doctors at the time could do something about. Uh, they understood that smallpox was one of those diseases that they could vaccinate against. And so in some cases you see during the Civil War vaccinations being done within the armies. Um, a very famous example of, of a vaccination gone wrong um, creates one of the, the, the great quarantine stories of the American Civil War. Uh, in the spring of 1863, down in the vicinity of Fredericksburg, Virginia, the famed 20th Maine Volunteer Infantry uh, were undergoing vaccination when uh, a virulent form of, of smallpox broke out amongst the ranks, and suddenly uh, more than 80 soldiers in the ranks got it because, again, they're living in conditions like this in the winter uh, army camps. And so that regiment missed the Battle of Chancellorsville because they were actually quarantined from the rest of the army. Army leadership did not want smallpox breaking out through the ranks of the army. Um, and so smallpox is one of those rare diseases, though, that doctors could do something about during the conflict, uh, a little bit different than what they could do with diarrhea, dysentery, and also uh, with typhoid fever, many of the treatments there not being as effective. Now, there are many other diseases that are going to impact uh, life for Civil War soldiers, uh, thinking about things like malaria, another disease that's, uh, that surgeons could do something about. Um, also, uh, sexually transmitted diseases, a major issue uh, for, for soldiers of both sides during the conflict, especially in the downtime that these soldiers are going to be facing, especially in larger populated areas like cities. So it's very important when you're thinking about Civil War soldiers to not just think about them on the march, to not just think about them on the battlefield, but to also think about the long hours, days, weeks, months they spent in these camps and the diseases that they faced during the conflict.